Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I see a lot of friends, family, uh, colleagues, Library of Congress staff that was extremely influential in helping put this book together. Um, I'm a little nervous, uh, so I'll just uh, say thank you so much again for being here. Um, so yeah, okay, Frederick Douglass in D.C. We all uh, know Frederick Douglass. His statue was just moved to Emancipation Hall. Um, but we really don't get much past the talking points. Kind of, we don't scratch the surface of who Douglass really was as a as a grandfather, as a mentor, um, as a newspaper man, as a, as a Washingtonian. So I tried to try to get into that in, uh, get into that element and uh, of his life in this book. And as Mr. Cole talked about, uh, kind of. Uh, had like a revelation that made me put this book together, which I'll 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 share. So this is a wayfinding sign for the Frederick Douglass National Historic Site. This is at 16th and W Street, Southeast in Historic Anacostia. It's a uh, it's a rough and tumble corner. So I used to work at the United Planning Organization on at 1649 Good Hope Road. Um, it basically was like a poverty worker. I essentially worked in social services, and when I would take the metro there, I would walk every day from the Anacostia Metro Station down MLK, down W Street, then make a left on 16th Street. And I mean, early in the morning, it's really not too much going on, but um, the morning on June 7th, 2010, there was a uh, crime tape uh, all over the place. There was a um, crime lab van. So something obviously happened, but you know, I kind of just kept it moving. So I get to my office and I bring up a uh, MPD press release and a uh, 17-year-old young man had been shot and killed on that corner. And I believe as of now, his uh, homicide is still unsolved. Um, came out a couple days later and some reporting that he was a, he had absconded from the Department of Youth Rehabilitative Services, juvenile justice system in the city. And so, uh, so it really kind of hit me, uh, you know, here he gets shot and killed at the foot of the Frederick Douglass house. Um, it's a national park site. Frederick Douglass is the most famous runaway slave in American history. I mean, there's lots of other slave narratives, lots of other runaway slaves, men and women, but Frederick Douglass is kind of the person who's remembered. So a coworker of mine, I said, um, I said to my coworker Anthony, I said, isn't that, uh, I mean, what's going on out here? And Anthony kind of said, hey, well, you know, you know, Frederick Douglass was reincarnated and came down on the corner and people would say, hey, old man, you know, get on, you know, we're trying to make money out here, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the reality of it. I mean, that's really what it is. And um, a lot of young people in the neighborhood, all they know about Douglass is that they think his house is haunted. So with that said, um, so with that said, we went to the, went to the, uh, the Douglas home a couple days later on our lunch break and Anthony, my friend, Anthony Moore, I'll give a shout out to, he's a very, very good friend of mine. He's a native Washingtonian. He had never been to the Douglas house. He'd never really read about Douglas, but he knew about Douglas. Just kind of, kind of permeates our awareness or consciousness here as Washingtonians. But he kept kind of almost interrogating the park, uh, rangers and said, well, if you ran up to Douglas in the street, you know, would he tell you to, to, you know, would he give you some advice or would he tell you, hey, he's busy, you know, get out of his face. We, we, you know, what, what, who, what was he like? Who did he hang with? Who were his friends? What did he do? What, you know, what made him, what made him so successful that he was able to command enough wealth, enough influence to have this, uh, have this estate? Now, show photos later, but if, I'm sure there's some folks who have been to the home. You can see the Capitol. You can see the Washington Monument. It's an incredible panorama, panorama of the city. So. Um, Park Ranger essentially basically admitted that we really uh, don't have much material about Douglas's life in Washington. He wrote a couple, uh, a couple of different versions of his autobiography. Most of the, most of what we know comes from that material. And so Anthony really was um, like me. He's very talkative. He's a conversationalist. But when we went back to the office, he really wasn't saying much. I could see he was uh, really in, I guess, deep thought. So he kind of broke the silence and said, "Hey, uh, hey, John." You know, I know you know about history and you do journalism, so you know you got to uh, got to put your money where your mouth is. And I said, well, I'm not going to say anything. And so he said, well, I'm going to say it for you. So um, that was in June 2010. We're now here in uh, June 2013, so it's been a long road. And uh, I really do thank the people who have helped me with this book. Uh, I take this stuff very deeply. I'm sorry. Um, all right, so that's it. I'm glad everybody's here. Okay, so uh, let me start on the story. Frederick Douglass. He's a. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get it together. Frederick Douglass is a man for all seasons. He's really. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, so Frederick Douglass, we all, you know, we all know Frederick Douglass. He's kind of like a Rosa Parks, a Dr. King. You know, he's like just put on this pedestal. Well, who is he really as a man? Who was he as a, like I said earlier, who is he as, who is he as a father, a friend? Uh, this is from Mount Vernon. As you can see, he's kind of standing to the side. 
And um, Frederick Douglass was a newspaper man. He was an abolitionist. He was an advocate for women's suffrage. But he really was so much more than that. So I tried to touch into who he, who he was, what his character was like. And this, this image I did not use in the book, but this kind of just struck me um, because George Washington is the founding father of the country. Everyone knows him, and Frederick Douglass uh, is, is as important or, uh, to this country, I think, as, as George Washington. Okay, uh, this is a photo of a crowd going to President Lincoln's uh, second inaugural address. Just to keep it real quick, uh, Frederick Douglass had two interviews with Abraham Lincoln. In the summer of 1863, uh, he read President Lincoln the Riot Act. He basically said, we need to fully enlist black troops if we're going to win this war. Louis Douglass, who uh, is Frederick's eldest son, was on the beaches of Fort Wagner with the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. If anyone's seen the movie Glory here, Louis Douglass is with those folks that charge, charge Fort Wagner. Um, so Douglas kind of said, hey, Lincoln, you got to get with the program. If we're going to win this war, we need to unleash this force. Um, he then comes back in the fall of 1864, summer, fall of 1864, meets with him. Um, they were buddies. They were, what did I say buddies? They had a mutual respect for each other. Um, there's, been, there's been some recent books that have come out about Douglas and Lincoln. There was a play at Ford's Theater. Um, and I really tried to move past that, move, try to move beyond that. Um, but Douglas is in the crowd at the second inaugural. Um, it's a very, very well-known story, and I'll tell it again. That uh, Frederick Douglass basically crash it, crashes the um, after party at the executive mansion. And I'm sure everyone, some people know this story. That uh, Douglas is trying to get in, and some police say, you know, who are you? We can't admit you. And he says, oh, that's nonsense. You know, Mr. Mr. Lincoln knows me. Send word to him. So basically, Douglas is essentially being physically removed out, like he's, his bouncers are moving him out of a club or something. And so uh, Lincoln comes, and he says, oh, Mr. Douglas, you know, that's my friend. Let, let, you know, let him go. And uh, Lincoln says, sir, what did you think of that, uh, that speech? And Douglas says, well, you know, I don't think you want to hear my humble opinion. And Lincoln says, no, that's nonsense. What did you think? And then Douglas says, sir, that was a sacred effort. Uh, Frederick Douglass is actually in Rochester when Lincoln is assassinated. Andrew Johnson was a pretty difficult president. Uh, Douglass and other black Washingtonians met with him in February of 1866 and essentially tried to persuade Johnson to change course. He really was, um, I'm sure there's, I know there's many historians here, but Johnson really was um, adversarial to the Freedmen's cause. He was adversarial to the radical Republicans in Congress, so he made it quite difficult. So. Skip that, uh, President Grant is president, and that's really kind of where, where my story begins. Because this is what Frederick Douglass would have looked like uh, when, he, when he comes to Washington. Like I said, uh, kind of in between uh, Civil War being uh, Civil War over and uh, President Grant's uh, inauguration. Okay, this is really where the story begins. Um, to the left here is Charles Douglass, to the right is Louis Douglass, and in the middle is Joseph Douglass. The reason why these, uh, they're important is Frederick Douglass had five children, four grew to adulthood. Um, they essentially moved to Washington after the Civil War. Um, they were Frederick Douglass's sons, but they made their own name. Uh, they, they, they were heroes in their own right. Um, Washington, D.C. is kind of an interesting place. Washington, D.C. had a large free black community. Prior to the Civil War, it was established black middle class in Washington. Washington really kind of always has been a special place for a uh, history of uh, African-American culture. Uh, Calvin Chase, who started the, started the Washington Bee, was born in 1855. He was born free in Washington. So Washington had a large established black middle class, and the Douglases wanted to be part of that. I mean, when I say the Douglases, the children. By uh, 1868, Charles Douglas is in Washington working for the Freedmen's Bureau. This is actually the 1868 city directory. As you can see, Charles Douglas, and back, uh, back then they denoted uh, folks' ethnicity. You don't see that today in the, the phone. Well, I guess we don't have phone books anymore, but when you used to have phone books, you wouldn't have ethnicity uh, uh, marked. So we see Charles Douglas um, was a clerk for the Bureau of Refugee, Freedmen's, and Abandoned Lands, which is known as the Freedmen's Bureau. He lives in Potomac City. You can also see Frederick Douglas, Jr., Does anyone know where Potomac City is now? Uh, it's Berry Farm is the, is the name for it now. So this is a map. This is actually an 1894 Bast map. Um, I'm going to move here. Hopefully you can still pick up the audio. So this is St. Elizabeth's, uh, originally Government Hospital for the Insane. Dorothea Dix starts it in 1852. They see the first patient in 1855. 
This is